precise way black should make a draw, but I'm not sure. Ding is thinking here, this is a big moment. Crunch moment, he goes king c4, he goes for this idea, Dani, because the thing is that if you get your king to a2, it's super hard to improve from there. Too, too passive, way too passive, but yeah, I, I, absolutely right, I think this is the only way to go. Carlson has given a check on e4. We're seeing this line, a2 will be played, he can go a2 next, king d5, a2. Yes. So we're going to get this position on the board exactly. Maybe Dani, king d5, rook a4, is that an option? Ah, interesting. Rook a4. Ah. This changes. This changes everything. Yes, yes. and then maybe it transposes because we're just going to take here anyway. All right, maybe Ding just what? changed his mind because he fell back with the king. He Wait just changed his mind. Okay, do you know what? In this position, maybe we don't need to take. We can give a check. Oh no, the king will come here. Can can white actually make maybe white can't make progress here? If we just sit. Do you know what that could be a draw? Because the rook can't join because of a2. Could just be a draw. Very interesting. And as you pointed out, well he's played king a2, but this this is way too passive. F5 takes f6. He's played it. How does white make progress? I don't I see I think it. Magnus has survived this one. Incredible. And I think it comes down to that moment. The, the bitch page five moment. Your bitch page five. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up one more time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, why not? <laughs> it it looks it's looked like looks like a draw. H5. Yeah, I don't see how ding ding. Oh, it suits fun. Ooh. Hello? Hello? But why? What happens after? Oh, let's just point out king e7. You can go f6, rook king e6, and there is f7, so king can't move from there. Rook d3, so still holding it. Rook okay, e4 now? Rook e4? Rook e4, now you fall back with the rook. So you go rook to d8, Danny. Rook d8 is the move. And. Should be a draw, right? King takes king f5. So. Yeah, Max played rook d2. Just for a moment there, I panicked because, of course, the rook is in the best position behind the e-pawn and suddenly he has to move it away, but it does look like this, as he's played, looks That's like... scary. Very... Because like you were mentioning after rook e4, black needs to be careful because king e7 loses to f6. So rook e4, king e7 doesn't work, so maybe rook d8 is the only way to keep things together. Yeah, but... As you say, it is, I think it's sufficient because f5 is hanging. We've got some moves. It's gone. Like this. And they're repeating. Oh, he's, oh, played, he's played rook e2. And, and rook d8. d8. Rook d8 immediately played by Magnus. Magnus, look at the clock situation. Dingler it down to less than 50 seconds. Magnus has got 11 minutes on the clock. And this he holds. And let's just show why, Danny. Uh, even though white has got these f5, e6 pawns, they're not going anywhere. The problem in white's position is that the king on a2 is basically playing without a piece. That king is tied down to the a3 pawn, and while he picks that up, he ends up losing the other pawns. Uh, after rook d8, e7, rook e8 would have just ended the game on the spot. You go king f5 and pick up that e7 pawn as well. This is just a repetition. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we're heading for it. Rook now rook e3? Rook e3 will repeat the position. Wow, so Magnus off the crossbar. This is extraordinary. Yeah, we're, we're drifting towards a draw now. Rook d8. And let's just show that, Danny, that if e7 here, rook to e8, and king takes a3, you pick up Maybe you can pick up either of the pawns, really, but king f5 is also possible. King falls back, pick up the e7 pawn, and that's game over. Yeah. Something very similar happening right now. Actually, we do have this position on the board. Yeah, it's exactly this. Draw. <laughs> so, with that draw, that means that Magnus Carlsen wins that first set because he won the first game. But that was tricky. Tanya, 